Hi there, welcome to chendu.org. In this video, let us understand the vacation calculations homework problem and solutions for it. Last week, I have published a vacation calculation homework problem which has three questions. First, let us quickly take a look at the data and then I will explain the questions to you. Then we will work on the solution. We have some vacation data where certain employees have taken uh, vacations with various start and end dates. So we have, for example, Nancy and she went on a vacation from 1st of January 2012 until 7th of January 2012. Right? Then we have Lance who started on 12th of January 12 and then went on vacation until 15th of January 12. So like this, the data continues for a few hundred rows. Uh, about 123 vacation records we have and all these vacations are structured in an excel table with the name vacations on it so that you could quickly refer to any column with structural references and if there are more vacations instead of 123 if you have 1200 also the formulas would work good okay and the questions are how many vacations are taken in a given period so we have two variables, start and end date. This is a start date, this is an end date. These can be changed by user. So for the sake of this exercise, I have put in two dates, 1st of February 12 to 31st of February 12. That is uh, February and March months. And the question I have is how many vacations are taken in this period? I just want to know the total number of people, uh, distinct vacations that are taken in that period, total number of vacations. The second question is same, but this time um, the first question assumes that the vacation should start and end within this period. So that means the vacation start should be on or after 1st of February and end date should be on or before 31st March. Whereas the second question is putting a small wrinkle on it. Uh, here we are asking uh, the vacation can start before February 1st but if it has at least one day in February, then we should count it. Likewise, vacation can end after March, but if it has still has one or two days into the March, then we should need to, we, we need to count. So for this particular example, if you just take the dates 1st of February and 31st March, then you have 20 vacations. If you just see here, uh, these are all sorted by the start date. So you could just count like this. So these are all the vacations that are taken in the, in the given period. So we have this selection and you could see that the count is 20. So this is what we are trying to ca calculate in the first question. In the second question, we are interested in all these as well because David's vacation, which started on 26th of January, extended all the way until 2nd of February. Likewise, Zinhua's vacation started on 30th March and ended on 11th April. So we want to count all these two extra vacations also. For that, the answer would be 22. The third question is probably the most trickiest of all. It is how many distinct people took vacation in this period? The question is something like this. We want to have the names of all these people and then anybody who repeats, we just need to remove. So although there are 22 vacations, if you look at the names, you have so many repeats. For example, Vincent has taken multiple vacations, So it is being counted multiple times. Xinhua has taken multiple vacations. Uh, Jackie has taken multiple vacations. So once you exclude all those things, you would end up with 14 people as answer. So that is the third question. How many distinct people took vacation in this period? So these questions are not entirely challenge, uh, impossible, but the thing is uh, they require a bit of Excel skill to solve. So let us go ahead and understand which formulas will help you to answer these questions. The first question, how many vacations are taken in this period? The assumption here is the entire vacation must be within the start and end dates. This means we need to count the number of rows in this particular vacation table where start date is on or after 1st of February and end date is on or before 31st of March. So which formula would do that? Well, your guess is very good. The formula that works in this case is called as count ifs. Count ifs formula can take multiple conditions and count all the values in a table that match all those conditions. Here the condition number one is start date has to be more than 
on or after 1st of February and date has to be on or before 31st March. So let us write that formula. Count ifs. Criteria 1 would be vacations of uh, start date is on or after the start date 1st of February 12 so that is uh, st start likewise vacations end date is on or before end date right once you put these two and press enter you would get the number 20 as the answer which is exactly what the total number of vacations that are taken in that period now how would we go about finding the vacations where there is at least one day in this period well it might seem somewhat tricky but the answer is just like the above one for this we just have to take that number and add any vacations where the start date or end date happen to be before the vacation or after the vacation so let me first explain the logic to you uh, we need to count all these vacations anyway because these 20 should be included these are 20 vacations if you see count that is 40 because we have selected two columns uh, so these 20 should be counted so there is no need for us to write the formula again we could just refer to that number and plus uh, write something here then we need to check the vacations such that uh, the start date is less than the start date here so vacation start date should be less than that and vacation end date should be more than the start date right likewise vacation start date should be uh, less than or equal to end date and vacation end date should be more than the end date here it might some sound somewhat tricky but the formula is very simple 20 plus count ifs vacation start date is less than start and vacation end date is greater than or equal to start right so that means the start of the vacation should be before our start date and end date should be I'm sorry for that end date should be after the start date of the period here okay plus this only covers all the vacations that are taken prior to the start date of the period that is 1st of February and overlapping into the period we also need to do the same for the other end so that would be count ifs one more count ifs this time vacation uh, start date is less than end vacation end date is greater than or equal to n okay so the formulas are very easy to construct and once you understand the logic then it becomes very very simple when you, once you press enter you would get 22 as answer okay so that answers the question number one and two what about question number three this is probably the most trickiest of all and there are many interesting answers in the post that I have published on this particular homework what I'm going to show you is one of the easiest ways to do it this involves adding an extra column into our table and doing it there let me just take a sip of coffee and let's just the first thing that I'm going to do is insert a column it seems like uh, suddenly the birds here have taken become very very noisy so I'm sure you can hear that which is very good we live in a very uh, nature friendly locality with lots of trees and other things so it's quite pleasing to hear these bird noises and other things moving on the we have added a column here into our table uh, this is part of the table that uh, the vacation still well, I think it's, uh, it is not part of the table so probably our job will be simpler if I add insert a column to the right like that and I'm just going to do that and we'll call this column as dummy no it doesn't matter what name we give it here uh, we'll, we'll just call it dummy okay now in the dummy column the condition that we want to put is 
the question that we are asking is how many distinct people took vacation in this period that means we want to show the number of times a person took leave a person took a vacation up to that point in the table up to that point in the table so as we go along for example uh, so this is the vacation window that we are concerned about right that that's the vacation window in this window i'm just looking for how many times each person took so this would be lance one because that's the first time lance took a vacation vincent is one thomas is one but now vincent has taken second vacation so this would be two so the numbers would be one 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 two i think uh, this was set in date format so let me just fix that okay so one one and two Likewise, Zin Hua is one, Mindy is one, Cindy is one, Albert is one, Jackie is one, Jack is one, Ganesh is one, Queen is one, Queen is Barry is one, and the second time Queen is repeating, we'll put that too. Okay. Of course, I may make some errors because I'm manually typing this, but we don't really have to type it like this. We would write a formula here that would enter these numbers, and any date that is outside the vacation window, that is before 1st of February or after 31st March, we don't care. So that can be blank. And then once these numbers are here, we just have to do a count if on this column and just count how many ones are there. That gives us answer, isn't it? So how do we go about that? Well, one simple way is to use a, as a set of formula. So let me just write that and I will explain. So our formula is this particular one. I'm just going to copy this to a blank cell so that I can explain it to you better. I'll just uh, put a semi single code before that so it looks like a formula and uh, let me just very quickly make it nice and big wrap the text okay so this is the formula this might look somewhat uh, very big but what all we are trying to do is the first thing that I'm going to check is whether the start date of a particular row current row is on or after the start and end date is on or before the end date of our vacation period so if this is the case then this would be true the end formula otherwise it will be false so if it is false then you would get false as 0 and true as 1 and multiplying with 0 whatever is the portion of this count ifs uh, that would be just 0 right because whatever the value this this would be our end formula would just make it 0 because 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 but if that is not the case, whatever is the result of that count ifs that we are going to get. What does this count if do? It is going to take all the values in the B, B column B up to that point, check against the name, column C with start, column D with end. Let me very quickly show you that in action. So we have here, uh, uh, we have here end of start date greater than start, end of Start, end, at the rate end date less than end that means if the start date is after the start of vacation period end date is before the end date then this particular end formula will give us true otherwise it will be false in this case all the dates in January would be false so we don't have to worry about them because all of them will be zero our main interest is that formula that here so that would this particular thing will value it to be true right if I show you the result for that that would be true okay now the second thing is we are running a count ifs that checks in column B up to B4 B4 is an absolute reference so it will always start from that and B9 is the current cell so as you drag this formula down it will become B10 B11 like that so up to that cell how many times the name of that person has repeated so the question here is count ifs b4 to b9 b9 this particular portion would mean how many times whoever it is in the b9 cell has taken vacation up to this this point of time the next thing is c4 to c9 is greater than or equal to start that means c4 to c9 c4 to c9 start date has to be greater than start end date has to be so all in all this count ifs formula is going to ask how many times whoever it is on B9 that is Lance has taken a vacation within the vacation period so that would be 1 
one one the second time somebody's name repeats it will be two if there is a third time that will be three so now that we have all these ones twos and threes we would just write something like count if uh, vacations dummy one that means in the vacations table how many times the number one has repeated that would come back as 14 because there are 14 people who were uh, 14 distinct people in this list who have taken vacation in that period now you can change these dates and the numbers will match depending on the date period that you are interested for example we could just ask the same question for up to May and we'll get different results great so I hope you have enjoyed this little formula exercise it is somewhat tricky but I think uh, you found the ideas of using count ifs and helper columns and end formula and multiple conditions as well as using this operations of greater than less than along with concatenation uh, somewhat useful and go ahead and play with these ideas and experiment and analyze your data in more beautiful ways thank you so much for your time and attention I hope you have enjoyed this little video for more information and examples on Excel formulas and other things, please check out chendu.org slash WP. I wish you a great day ahead. Bye-bye.